So my name is Janelle Lewandowski. I'm Wellred Moms Director of Membership. And I really appreciate you guys hopping on the call tonight. It's our volunteer leaders that really truly make this experience of reading and friendship possible. So in um, 2012, my husband and I and our five children moved to this little town in central Minnesota. And my sister-in-law, Marcy, invited me to a book club she was starting, and she called it Well-Read Mom. So I was there at that, that first meeting. So Marcy had been giving a series of talks to local moms group that she was calling Well-Read Mom. And what she learned in talking to these moms was that a lot of women want to read, but they can't find the time. And also they don't know where to start when it comes to choosing the books. She found that these women actually aren't unique because in 2021, a Pew Research study reported that over 60 million American adults reported they hadn't read a book in the last year. And I can't imagine it's gotten a lot better since 2021 because things are just changing so quickly. Marcy's idea coincided with a conversation that she was having with her daughter, Beth. So Beth was a, a new mom and she'd been going to these mother's groups and she voiced frustration like, mom, all we do is talk about you know, diapers and baby food. Isn't there a place for women after college where we can talk about the important things in life? So Marcy said, Beth, let's do this together. They'd been talking about this idea. She said, well, pick the books and then I'll record an audio for you to play to your friends, play for your friends in St. Paul. So it's really easy for you to lead this group. And very quickly, word spread. And by halfway through that year, there were over 100 women that had started a group and said, can you send me the audio or, jo or joined an existing group? And believe it or not, just over a decade later, there are over a thousand group leaders all over the United States and in six other countries and almost 8,500 women that are reading together. And this has really largely been by word of mouth. So it's pretty amazing. So for Mercy, the book club wasn't just about reading and friends, although those are both things she wanted more prominent in her life. This idea of well-read mom was a way to take care of her heart. So I'm going to show a, a short three-minute video that's located on our website if you wanted to share it with friends in the future. But Marcy will explain in her own words how she came to this idea of taking care of her heart through literature. Our conception of motherhood is that we just serve our children constantly. But caring about my own heart is also part of motherhood. I was running to my son's cross country meet. And I remember thinking that day, you know, who takes care of me? I'm exhausted. I don't know if I can keep going like this and nobody knows it. And a couple of weeks later, I was telling my Italian friend about this. She said something that changed my life. You American mothers, you think that being a mom is all about running to the events your kids are in. Take care of your heart. That's how you mother. So this was revolutionary for me because all of a sudden I had to look at what does taking care of my heart have to do with being a mom? Well, when, when we read, we grow in a capacity in our inner space. And so when I read a good novel, it increases my capacity even to live with the tensions of life, to be with people. I'm, I'm a big fan of having books in the home one night, my son was home from college and for the weekend, and well, he had gotten up at like 2 a.m. to get some cereal and couldn't sleep. And, was, and so he looked through the bookshelves, grabbed St. Augustine's Confessions, and starts reading it. And he says the next day, you know, Mom, it's really pretty interesting. And so all of a sudden, surprise, we have this dialogue going about St. Augustine. And it was a surprise for me, and it came through you know, sharing that experience of uh, a love of or what we get through reading. I think the Lord uses literature in our life to help us from places we're stuck. In this culture that we live in that's so visual, a book that stood the test of time says something that's true to the human experience. And so it can help us to see. It educates us. It helps us to move toward holiness. I want young mothers, I want family, I want women to understand. Don't forget your heart. Don't neglect it. This is what we do to change the culture. We think it's nothing. So, so much so that it's, it's really sometimes seen as a waste of time to sit and read a novel. It might be the best parenting you ever do.
Okay. So that is the heart of the of the story, how this all began. Really succinctly, our mission is that we want to accompany women in reading great books and spiritual class classics to encourage personal growth, friendship, and meaningful conversations in order to explore the human condition and reorient ourselves to what is good, beautiful, and true. And we try to make this very easy for other women to jump into by offering a clear proposal. So the who of Well-Read Mom is that we invite all women from all different walks of life. We understand motherhood in the broadest possible sense of the generative capacity of all women. So we have single women in our groups. We have consecrated women. We have women with biological ch children, foster children, adoptive children, no children. And so that it's a, a wide net that we're casting. And each group looks unique based on who you invite. What we're doing is we read nine or 10 books a year. We begin in September and we generally go through May or sometimes June. I read a spiritual book in Advent and Lent and the book loosely correlate to a theme of a woman's life. So the themes originally came from St. John Paul II's letter to women in 1995 when he says thank you women who are sisters thank you women who are mothers thank you women who work and the, so those were some of our first themes year of the mother year of the sister year of the friend year of the contemplative and now we're in our 12th year and this is year of the seeker so that's not one of the original themes in uh, jp2's letter there but we're still looking at these themes that help us dive deeper into the plots of our own lives Let's see, where do we meet? We really encourage groups to meet in the flesh. We have, um, like I said, over a thousand groups, maybe 25 of those are virtual. So sometimes that might be someone who, whose family is spread out and she has sisters and they want to do a virtual group so they can stay connected that way. We have some military groups, but we're really trying to encourage women to meet in the flesh as much as possible. We have a really strong emphasis on holding that time sacred that we're together each month. And when do our groups meet? So our groups, each group decides what works best for you. So we have groups that meet Saturday mornings, weeknights. Um, it really depends on if you want your meeting to be more succinct or more open. Like we want to stay and gather and talk for a few hours. That will depend on, on what you pick for your meeting date. My recommendation is once you've talked with the women to find a date that you can generally repeat for the whole year, like the fourth Thursday or the first Saturday, because I've really seen a lot of groups fall apart when they start waiting till the end of the meeting to say, when should we meet next month? And then, well, I can't, I have this, I have this. And then the momentum starts to fade quickly. So why are we reading these books? We're not just reading them to be well-read, although that is happening. And we see previous books we've read mentioned in the books we're reading now, which is really fun. But we're, we're reading these books to help us grow and to have insight into our own lives. And so it's different than, say, like a bestsellers or Oprah's book club. The, the reasons we are choosing these books and the reasons we read the books are different. So we have great resources. The primary resource for all the women is the Reading Companion. And so this is almost 150 page book this year that was written by volunteers and staff to introduce the women to the works for this year. So there's a part that introduces the theme of seeking. And then for each book, there's a biography of the author. There's a section called a closer look, which is what you might keep an eye out for as you're reading a reflection written by one of our well-read mom members, and then discussion questions. So you're welcome to use your own questions, but a lot of women sometimes start with these and then see where the conversation goes. And so we try to make it really easy for you just to pick up and start the group without having to do a lot of research on your own about the author or the time in history. We try to package that all together for you very succinctly. And then uh, also really key to the Well-Read Mom experience are the monthly audios. So we have two audios each month on our website that are available to all the members. So you play one at the beginning of your meeting that kicks off your discussion for that night and the second audio at the end of the meeting to introduce the upcoming book. If someone misses the meeting, they also have access to all these online, which is kind of nice too. If you're traveling and you miss the meeting, you can still stay in tune with your group because you have access to the audios and to this reading companion as well. We do quite a fair number of bonus podcasts and videos to help with some of the harder books that we've attempted. When you're a member, and you log on and you see the book list, you can also see all the previous themes and all the previous book lists too. So sometimes people like to see what did you read in the past and maybe pick out a couple of those to try out. Each summer, we publish a summer magazine, which is a compilation of reflections from our members all across the country, which is I really enjoy because 
we have our local groups, but to get to hear what's happening in other groups and see photos of their groups and learn more about how they felt they grew as women that year is really awesome to do together. Um, in the back of this reading companion, we have a family supplement, which was basically an answer to the question that women were posing. Do you have books you can recommend that I read with my children? And so for each month of the year, there is a selection for younger kids and older kids, along with some discussion questions. It's a lot more brief than the rest of the resources because we want to focus on the women and the women reading. But there are some groups of um, kids, grandkids, neighbor kids who read these books either with their families or read them together as their own little book group, which is kind of fun. And lastly, I'll mention we have a podcast you can find on Spotify or Amazon Podcasts that is the Read More, Read Well podcast, your help along the reading journey. So we introduce, introduce and interview different well-read moms, talk about how they built their reading practice, how they approach the more challenging books, how we develop the mental capacity and concentration we need to read. So those are pretty brief, like 10, 12 minutes, but welcome you to check those out as well. And those are for the free and for the general public. Okay, so women always want to know what is on the well-read mom book list, which is important. And we take a lot of time coming up with that. But what's really unique, I think, about well-read mom is the method that we use to read these books together. And when you lead a group, we're asking you to follow the same method so that even though every group's unique based on who's in it, there's a consistency across the groups in terms of what the well-read mom group looks like. So the method has four components. Um, the first one is a company. So we stay together in the reading. So all the groups are reading the same book at the same time, which makes it possible to really have this national conversation. No matter which group you're in, if you meet other women who are in well-read mom groups, you can talk with them or with your siblings because you're reading the same book. There's also some fun stories about women bumping to other women reading the same book at the airport and saying, ah, I bet you must be in well-read mom. And just being able to start a conversation right there about what we're reading. Reading the same book together at the same time really facilitates awareness of a broader cultural conversation that's taking place. Something that's fun to note is the publishers are taking note too. So like if you, when you look for your books online, it'll often say, oh, you're looking for that book. You might also enjoy these. And so these great books are becoming um, more popular again because there's a demand for them, which has been great to see. The second step is to read, which sounds simple, but usually that's most of the challenge for women is making the time to read and giving ourselves the time and space to do that. So we do, when the women register in the email you receive back, we do have a reading plan in there. So some women like to see, okay, how much do I need to read? How many pages do I need to read every week to get this book read? And other women need more binge read, sneaking in whenever they can. Third, we compare. So we enter into the drama of the story and we ask ourselves, what does this mean? For my life. And so this has been different for me compared to other book groups I'm in where we primarily stayed at a more surface area. Like, did you like the book? Did you not like the book? Did you like that character? We're trying to do something a little bit deeper here, which is really to look at what we're learning in the literature and looking at what does this have to say to me about my own experience in my own life. And then lastly, we're sharing that with one another, sharing how have I grown in empathy? What do I understand more about this, this theme of seeking, for instance, this year's theme through the reading that we're doing? I will say that success looks different for every woman. So you might read a few pages of all of the books this year. You might read every page of every book. You might surround yourselves with thoughtful women at your group meetings. You make time for yourself to go to book club. You might share one of the books from our family supplement. But most importantly, you're engaging with this, this group, this movement of women who are changing the culture one book at a time by making time for this intentional reading and friendship. So we say there's one rule in Well-Read Mom, which is don't apologize if you don't get the book read. And so there's been women who have been, you know, have come to the groups for a long time before they actually finished a book. But the idea is to raise the bar, but not to raise it so high that nobody can be successful. There's been times that I haven't finished the book or I didn't really like the book or plan enough time to finish it. And often after the meeting, when I hear the the feedback and the input and the insight from other women, I go home and I finish that book because I realize that they, they realize something about the book that I didn't at the time. And so I'm always so grateful for the conversation. So I encourage the women to attend, even if they haven't finished the book. That being said, you do have to have people who finish the book in, able to, in order to have a discussion. And so I would just encourage you as you're getting your group together to talk about that expectation, or you, you need at least those core people that can have the discussion. But sometimes those expectations are something that make or break a breaker group. 
like one group that fell apart and um, Des Moines, the leader, oh, the leader, she was trying so hard, but she said, women are just dropping in and out of the meeting in between carpools and they haven't read the book. It was like more of a social thing. So she really had to reboot it and say, I love all of you, but I really want people who can commit to attending the meetings and who want to read these books. And it's been a much different, smaller, much smaller group, but a much richer experience for her. So what we're asking of you, if you decide you'd like to be a leader, is that you have these steps in mind. So first of all, you invite the women. So you can brainstorm women in your life that you think might enjoy this. And as I said, they can be from all sorts of walks of life. Each of our leaders, when you register, there is a chance where you can um, designate your group as open or closed to new members from the public. So we have a map feature I'll show you in a minute on our website that allows women to search for groups in their area. And actually hundreds of women have connected with groups that way. But you can also say, I have my five friends or 10, we're at a max of 10 because we're meeting in a home and close your group. And so it wouldn't show up as open to new members. And we're asking you to help connect women with well Read Mom and help them get registered so they have the resources. We find that women that have and use the resources have a much richer experience of well Read Mom and of their small group discussion and their friendships grow more deeply, more quickly. And then we're asking you to propose a well Read Mom method. So you're, you're explaining like, these are the books for the year. We're following this theme. We read them in this order and just kind of laying that out there because sometimes I mean, most people are used to let's just choose whatever books we want. And, but we're asking you if you're doing a well-read mom group to do it in this more particular way. So you'll have a, I mean, your group will be unique based on who you are and how you, when and how you choose to meet and who's in that group. But we want the groups to have some consistency across the nation. Like if people say they're doing well-read mom, that it has these elements of using the reading companion, doing the audios. Then we'd like you to follow that method of a company read, share, compare. And that's where we find the relationships really grow, grow most quickly is by being able to use this literature to look at our own lives and share that with one another. And lastly, to foster friendship. So to facilitate the group in a way that encourages respectful and thoughtful dialogue. Sometimes the groups get heated about certain characters or certain books, but um, one thing I've loved to hear is just how the women have appreciated hearing other perspectives and being able to have some converse, like really meaningful, in-depth conversations about important topics. So when you join as a leader, there's an opportunity to request a leader pack, which would have either five or 10 copies of these registration forms, the brochures in the middle, there's a paper, well-read mom, leader guide, and then on the bottom right, the launch into literature. And so we can send those out to you. They're also all available on our website under join us leader resources. You can find digital copies of these. So you could download them and share them with friends or just print them out for yourself. So the basic membership cost is $49.95. So it's about a little over $4 a month. And we send you your resources right away. We also have other membership levels that include all of the books for the year. So if you're a person where you think, I don't want to month by month be finding these books, which it's your choice how and where you find those. So you could ask your library to order a set. You can buy them used. You can buy them on Amazon or um, our bookshop page. We have links on our book list page that will take you to the books. Sometimes like for some of the Russian authors, you might recommend a particular edition or translation. So sometimes it's helpful to go to that page and just make sure, okay, this we picked one that we think is going to be most enjoyable for the members to read. Okay, so going back to those other membership levels, that's the basic membership is $49.95. The next one is $250, which includes all the books for the year and a donation to Well Read Mom, which really helps support our work. So we're a small nonprofit. There's six of us moms that work part-time and raising families. Some are doing other jobs. We have a 600 square foot office here in our small town and tens of thousands of books. So we're praying and working for a new space, but all the membership dollars really help support the work that we do. I'll also mention too in our Well Read Mom store that you can find the link on our website. There are some free samples. So if you wanted to try out a short story or um, even a, a full length book, you can find some samples there to try with your friends and the audio is included as well as the discussion questions. So we welcome you to, to give it a try. I'm gonna show you here. I am going to join today and then leader resources. So this is a great page for you to check out. So I'll talk about the steps to get started as a leader and then the leader responsibilities that I went over with you and the, well, the one rule. And then on the bottom here, you'll, you'll find 
all the, the downloads that you can access right away. And then here's a link, host an informational meeting. And so if you're thinking of, oh, I want to tell my friends about this, but I don't really know how to get started. We've prepared for you this informational meeting that's about 45 minutes. And there's some audios you can play, the video I shared with you, a slideshow, some some questions you can ask your friends, like about what, what do they think about this idea of reading as an intentional interruption? Do you think this would work? And so it just kind of gives you a sense to, or a time to get together get women together to talk about it before you launch. You could do this informational meeting and then also use one of the um, resources in the store. So here's the samples I mentioned, like this, the birthmark and the necklace are both really short stories you could use and even um, like the necklace read together that night or send people this link, they could print it off and read it and come to the meeting. And so you could, you could try a little bit of that discussion. I wanna show you one other thing here. If you go to find your community, this is the map feature where women can search for groups. And so if you're either looking for women in your area or looking to maybe contact a local existing leader and say, hey, would you mind if I stop by your group to kind of see how this works? I'm thinking of starting a group. Or sometimes people just as they're getting going, they want to know what are the other groups in the area. So you can put in your city and then you'll see that the group status will tell you some people read on their own. So we have those virtual groups where people who read on their own. Here's a leader and her group's full. Here's a, a leader and she's open to new members. So if you lived in Denver, you could click on Anna Hill and send her a message. And so you don't see, nobody sees the email or the exact address. And as a leader, you have the option to turn on or off your privacy settings if you want to be included in that. But it has, and it's been pretty cool for people that have moved to a new area who had an existing lowered mom group that they moved away from and been able to plug into a new group. So that's been a feature we're excited about and you might find it of use to you as you get started. Even if you say, oh, well, here's people on their own. I'm starting a group. I could, I'm trying to get women together. I could invite them, let them know I'm starting a group in their area. But that's totally at your discretion if that would be something you're interested in. Feel free to reach out anytime if you're getting as you're getting started or how would this work or this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? Happy to help.